back on the job again here we go so the weather doesn't really know what it's doing um, today it's actually raining but uh, it looks like the sun's trying to come out at the same time so it's going to be a battle of dark against light I think for this morning anyway so we've got the gazebo set up um, and you know we can get all our stuff under that which is absolutely fantastic we're going to get this last wall of feather edge done and then we're going to go through getting the thing fixed down so I thought I'd just quickly mention what nails I'm using for this featherboarding. Um, I've got a 63mm galvanised nails. The projection of the featherboarding is about 32mm, so that means that we basically get a sort of 30mm penetration into the stud work, which will hold that nice and firm. Um, as it's no secret that I really like this uh, Paslo gun, I know they're coming for a bit of stick because they can get a bit temperamental if you don't look after them, and the simple answer to that is, you know, look after them. I don't mind servicing this, I service it regularly and uh, it doesn't really give them any problems. Um, it's nice and lightweight and I know that, you know, I've heard sort of people say, well, you know, um, we're supposed to be all big, strong boys in the construction industry, but what I will say is when you've been um, banging nails in this for as long as I have and you start to get a bit of arthritis in your, in your elbows and joints and stuff, you know, it really is nice to have a, a lightweight gun that you can use. Um, it really helps with things like fatigue. So let's get this uh, nailed in. That's all the boarding done up to uh, the same height now, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, we've just blown this last bit and I didn't video it because I think you've probably seen enough of uh, me putting boarding on in time lapse. Next job is to get it fixed down to the concrete base. Oh look, there's another one. This is just a furry sack with a baby dog in it, look. <laughs> oh, amazing. I had um, one of these dogs, Labrador's absolutely amazing. I had one for 15 years and three months. Came with me most days to work. I really miss having a dog. They're absolutely wonderful. Look at that. Locks on now, puppy. Kill. Chew it off. Go on. Show me how deadly you are. All I can feel is your soft tongue at the minute. Is that it? Hey. That's it. I've got to go for my sandwiches, mate. You've got to let go. I need those to get my crisps out of the bag. There he goes, he's gone. So we're coming to basically fix this structure down to the concrete now. We've got a six inch concrete slab here. And what I'm going to use is resin anchor. This is really, really great stuff. It's um, you know, super useful. And what's particularly good in this instance is the fact that we're sort of fairly close to the edge of this um, concrete pad now if we were to use a sort of traditional expansive type fitting like a drop bolt or something as we went to tighten it up there's a potential that it could cleave a lump off the edge of this slab so again the beauty is with the uh, resin anchor we can just drop this is a 10 mil threaded bar we'll drop that in maybe 100 mil into this concrete here and then when the resin goes in and the whole thing is just bound together, there's no sort of expansive forces. So it literally just, it pulls straight up as if it was sort of, well, it is connected to the concrete. So what I'm going to do, rather than just put it straight through uh, this floor plate, um, what, I'm, what I've actually done is got some of these little brackets. These are really quite cool three mil steel brackets. Uh, they're powder coated as well. So what I'm going to do is um, I've marked in through these. I'm going to drill these down through the wood into the uh, concrete. I've got 10 mil rod, so we put a 12 mil hole in. Uh, then when I set my bars in, I can put that bracket over the top, uh, wind a nut down onto there, and then what I can actually do then is, is uh, transfer the fixing from the concrete actually onto the stud as well, which then transfers its, um, you know, its load or its its restraining force, I should say, right up to the top. Because the biggest reason for doing this really is, uh, you know, to stop it taking off. You get a bit of wind load on it and it would uh, take off like a kite if it wasn't strapped down. So first job here is to cut a load of this threaded bar and then we can get on with drilling these holes, get them cleaned out with the air gun and then pump some resin in. 
So we're just gonna cut these threaded bar down using the disc cutter. You go proper goggles, obviously an ear defenders here because you, know, you don't want that flying into your face. I love this grinder, it's so cool. So as you see, I just caught a nail with this one with my auger bit. So rather than just keep pushing through and ruin my auger bit, what I've done is got a 12 mil HSS steel bit. So I'll just, just pop through that. It's only the end of a nail or something that saves ruining my auger drill bit. Gotcha. Don't go too much into the concrete. I know I say it every time, but the power of these cordless tools blows me away. I've got an 18 volt SDS drill here with a 54 volt battery, um, and it's putting a 12 mil drill bit through concrete like a hot knife through butter. When I first started, we had sort of percussion hammer drills that were just sort of basically all noise and no go. So, you know, we're really very fortunate to have these wonderful tools that we can use, you know, in our job today. So time to start putting the resin in. Um, this is this a polyester resin. I don't go for anything particularly uh, fantastic. Um, it's all it's all pretty good stuff. Uh, this is in the 380 or 400 milliliter cartridges, and you have to have a special gun. I tend to find that if you get the polyester resin that goes in just a normal sealant gun, um, it's very hard on the wrist. These have got like a sort of cam action. Um, they're just a bit just a bit easier. So. You know, it was worth me upgrading to this gun, and I think you get better value for money when you buy it in the bigger cartridges. So, um, I've got to pump a bit out, uh, run it out of this mixing nozzle until it gets a nice consistent colour, and then we can start putting it in. So, you can see uh, that's where I started pumping it out, and as it gradually mixes, it turns into a more consistent colour. So, let's uh... right. So, here's a hole. I think I'm just going to give it ni three nice pig pumps, and that'll be enough. Push it down one two, three, and draw it out of the hole slightly on each pump. Right, with the rod. And then when we push the rod in, you can just feel it, look, there's a, it's almost pushing it back up, look. That's just a bit of air in there, so we just give it a little bit of a wiggle. There we go. Lovely. That's really good. All right, 10 more to do. We're just waiting for this resin to go off till we tighten them up. I've just cut some temporary props in here because it's going to be a little while before the roof goes on and what we don't want is the wind to get hold of these and start shaking them around, although, you know, I've fixed them down. So what I've done is I've just fixed a, a tab into the floor. I've put this in the line, that's why it's not in the centre. And um, I've put that tab in the line of where there's going to be an internal wall so it won't mark the concrete. And then all, all I've literally done 
is uh, I've just clapped it ter temporarily, and then I just just make sure that it's upright. What's that? Is that not too bad? Can't see. I'll, I'll double check before I screw it. Just make sure it's upright, and then um, uh, and then screw it, uh, and that'll just be nice and solid. And then what I'll do is probably put from this point uh, diagonal at, at roof plate level across to the centre of that one, so it uh, holds that that wall together. And I'll do the same this end. Like I said, that'll just hold it nice and secure until the roof goes on, because the roof really is, uh, like as in most structures, the roof really is the sort of thing that binds it all together and gives it rigidity. Just a quick note about um, arguably what is a carpenter's best friend, the humble clamp, the, you know, sash clamp, G clamp, quick clamp, whatever. Absolutely brilliant, you know, and, and they come in handy just like as an extra pair of hands, especially when you're working your own. So what I've been able to do here is just clamp the level onto the stud and push the wall in and out until it's level and put a screw in. You know, really great bit of kit and always to hand in the van. So that bolt now is uh, resonating right down into that concrete. It's pulling down really nicely onto this plate here. Um, what we'll do now is just put some screws in the bottom of this plate and probably screw up all these. And that just ties this stud, which obviously goes up to the roof plate and the roof, right down into the concrete. So really great job. So here we go, finished for another day, um, really happy, had a good, good couple of days on this, pushed it right forward, got all the featherboarding up to a certain height, I don't, really, I don't want to go any higher because obviously I've got a, a gable end on this end and I've got to put the roof on here, we'll get it scaffolded. There's two concrete pads going to go in down here which is going to take some a post and frame which is going to take another roof which is going to cut into the main roof. Um, got it all fixed down to the concrete with these... Uh, um, angle brackets and resin anchor so I'm really happy that's not going to go anywhere put some temporary uh, braces in I'm happy we're making quite good progress on the job actually you know had to sort of get over the uh, the dodgy slab to start with but you know onwards literally and upwards so there we go I hope you've found this interesting it's a cracking job as far as I'm concerned and uh, you know I'll bring the next part to you as and when I do it thanks for watching